Hey guys, Naj Kazi here. Welcome back. In today's video, I'm going to talk about the cloud. This is where everything is happening. Infrastructure as a service, platform as a service, software as a service. If these terms are new to you, or if you're not familiar with them, have no fear. In today's video, I'm going to go deep into this topic and I'm going to talk about the history and the evolution of what led to the cloud. Without further ado, let's jump right into it. I'm super pumped. Let's go. Let's jump right into it. Here are the topics I plan on covering today. First, what is a data center? Second, private, public, and hybrid cloud. And finally, IaaS versus PaaS versus SaaS. Let's roll. So let's first talk about what a data center is. Here's a Wikipedia definition. A data center is a building or dedicated space within a building or a group of buildings used to house computer systems and associated components such as telecommunications and storage systems. It might as well be a bunch of mumbo jumbo if you don't have a lot of experience with data centers or if you don't know anything about data centers. So let me tell you a story of Bob. Bob is an entrepreneur and in particular, he opens up a coffee shop. He starts selling a ton of coffee to the point that he has to now hire a bunch of people to run his coffee shop. A couple of things Bob needs to think about. He needs to be able to run credit cards. So he needs a point of sale system. He needs to be able to pay his employees. So he needs a payroll system. And finally, he needs to be able to see all the inventory at the shop so he can manage things efficiently. To do that, Bob needs to get different type of servers, a POS or point of sale server, inventory management server, and an accounting server. That's three physical servers all together. This could be considered the most basic form of data center. Now, what happens next is interesting. Now, Bob needs to have a duplicate of each server because what if the one server that he had for running POS dies? Well, his POS system is going to be down and that is not acceptable, right? He needs to be able to charge his customers because Bob is crushing it. A lot of people are buying coffee. So he needs to have redundant servers to avoid going out of business, frankly speaking. But that adds to the cost. Now, Five years later, Bob has six stores. Here's what that means. He needs six servers per store times six stores. That's 36 servers. Well, that's a lot of physical servers. Bob's IT hardware cost goes up. His maintenance cost goes up. And Bob has to wait for months for hardware delivery. And that is pretty crazy. And that is making Bob very unhappy. However, lucky for Bob, he can now get virtual servers because virtualization just became a reality. And this is year 2000. What ends up happening in, in this new architecture, he can run three virtual machines on a single physical server. So he no longer has to get a server per application. Instead, he can run different VMs or virtual machines on a single server per store. That means instead of having six servers, he can now have two physical servers for redundancy. And that significantly reduces the hardware footprint and saves Bob a ton of money in the process. And now, Bob is a happy camper again. 10 years later, Bob now operates one of the largest chains in the country with over 1000 stores growing fast by the day. Well, at this point, Bob is so successful that mostly he chills 
at the beach. However, he gets a call from his CTO. Now check this out guys, Bob is so successful that he actually has a chief technology officer. That's pretty cool. And the CTO suggests to Bob that he needs to get rid of all the physical servers and move everything to the cloud. And in this new architecture, he suggests that we migrate all the workloads to the cloud. We have redundant SD-WAN design. We gotta get rid of all the physical servers and this will save us millions of dollars over the years. And let's turn all the capital expenditure into operating expense. Well, this all sounds really amazing and sexy, but Bob is a little confused with all these different buzzwords. So Bob asks his CTO to educate him on the topic of cloud. Let's do that. There are two things you need to understand to understand the cloud. First, cloud service models. So to explain this, first off, we start off at on-site where we manage everything, right? So that's our server, networking storage, everything is being handled by us. The next level up is IaaS or infrastructure as a service where all the red elements, everything operating system down is managed by a third party service provider and everything above the OS we manage. And some of the big providers that are considered giants in the IaaS space are Amazon Web Services, Microsoft Azure, and Google Cloud Platform. And the target audience for this type of cloud connectivity is system administrators. Next level to that is PaaS or Platform as a Service. Here you can th see that everything runtime below all the way to the networking stack is managed by a service provider and we only worry about the data and the applications. To give you a couple examples, GitHub, Google Application Engine, and Force.com are all PaaS platforms. And the target audience for PaaS platforms happens to be developers, software engineers. And finally, this is the ultimate nirvana, SaaS, or software as a service, where everything is being managed by a service provider. And some of the examples are Gmail, Yahoo Mail, Facebook, O365, Zoom, Instagram, and the list goes on and on, where everything is all packaged up, and you as a consumer use it. That's the target audience for SaaS. Pretty much everybody can use SaaS. And now let's shift our attention to the cloud deployment models. There are three different models you need to understand. First model is a private cloud. Here we have our servers, our switches, our firewalls, our routers, all that good stuff. That's a private cloud which basically means a data center. That's our own data center. That's a fancy term for our own on-prem stuff. Public cloud is where it gets interesting. This is where companies like Amazon Web Services, Microsoft Azure, and Google Cloud come into play, where we start to rent servers from these guys. So we no longer have to worry about space, power, cooling, messing around with the hardware or any of the cables or anything. All that stuff is managed by these providers. We have to choose one or we can choose multiple. It just depends what we need. But the bottom line is that at the end of the day, cloud is somebody else's computer. The fundamentals of computing don't go away just because we happen to be in a cloud. All that stuff is still there but we don't manage and touch any of the physical stuff. We only deal with the logical and virtual components that sit in these public cloud providers. And the final category is a hybrid cloud where we have a mix of some on-prem stuff and some stuff that gets moved into the cloud. 
a lot of customers find themselves in the hybrid cloud realm because depending on how old their applications are. If they have a lot of legacy applications that they cannot move into the cloud because of different type of dependencies, then they have to maintain some application footprint on their physical servers or virtual servers within their own data center. And then the rest of the workloads that are based on the newer application architecture could easily be shifted to the cloud and this way they can maintain different elements of their infrastructure. Another example could be the website. So for example, a store like Target could maintain its local database and all the application that it uses for pharmacy and everything else for point of sales and accounting on-prem, but then their website, they could move that into the cloud because you know, during Thanksgiving and holidays when they experience spikes, they don't have to purchase expensive hardware that just sits there. Instead, they can leverage the power of the cloud and scale up or down depending on the demand. That is the power of cloud. And that wraps up today's video. Hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, give me a thumbs up, hit subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.